happening. The Finder newspaper, how to open schools, religious places, large-scale measures may only be of limited effect without individual responsibility. Dr. Bormia cut sword for construction works to begin on Barracks Road. Uh, 7 million Ghana cities needed to complete 100-bed infectious disease facility. Claim that May salary would delay is false, according to the controller and accounting general. The Daily Guide this morning, Zoom Lion disinfects Navy vessels. 2020 election is about records, not violence. 20, uh, 2070 recover as COVID-19 cases hit 6,808. Abronia files counter complaint against Mahama. The Ghanaian Times, landlord arrested for killing tenant. Eastern Western Naval Command's benefit from Zoom line disinfection exercise. And COVID, Ghana's COVID-19 confirmed cases now 6,888. Easing COVID-19 restrictions, brace up for economic setbacks. Population <coughs> experts urges businesses. Professor Stephen Owusu Kwanchi is that uh, man. And uh, Daily Graphic. Graphic host, guest editors, Alassan and Danny takes uh, his turn uh, on Thursday. And also, we're in a fit of anger and rage, landlord shoots tenant. It comes to the photo of the, the photos of the two gentlemen. And the BNFT, time to halt political experimentation of gas resources, ASAP. And COVID-19 deepens rural banks' woes as they pull harder from locked up investment. And COVID-19 puts private school teachers on life support, a matter I've been talking about over and over and over and over again. My guest this morning is the former Deputy Minister for Trade and a man who uh, has his eyes on the seat of the Tamale Central constituency, Comrade Mutala Mohammed, as he likes to be called. He doesn't like Honorable. We'll decide whether when he gets to Parliament uh, he would stick to Honorable or not. And also, Eric Chum is a member of the MPP's communication team. He also is looking firmly at the Fantiaqua seat, and uh, hopefully my two friends will be in Parliament. Gentlemen, welcome. It's been a while. Uh, Eid you. Mubarak to you. Eid Karim. Uh, yes. it's, it's, it's been a long while. Mm. I haven't been on any set for about two to three months now. Why? Uh, one, I was in the constituency for some time. I came back, there was a you know, lockdown, mm -hmm. remember? I was then after that, with the Ramadan, I felt that I needed to be closer to my creator and then <laughs> You know, most often Muslims during Ramadan, we don't sleep much because you have to stand up in the night praying to Allah. So when you pray your Fajr prayer, mm -hmm. you certainly would want to have some sleep because you wake up and then you continue. So mm -hmm. it was a personal decision to avoid that. But let me quickly say that Eid Mubarak to you, Eid Mubarak to all Muslims across the country. And of course, mm -hmm. the good people of Tamale Central, and most importantly, the people of Changli. You remember mm -hmm. some about two, three months ago, mm -hmm. the, the police attacked an entire area called Changli and brutalized people. Uh, I really didn't want to get directly involved because I, I didn't want politics to be read into it. What we did in the area was mm -hmm. that I had a discussion with some of the leadership and I said, okay, I wanted to stay off, let them handle it. But that's where I'm coming from. Okay, I that's your born and bred. Apart from it being a constituency, I was born and bred in that particular area. Okay. So the people actually, petitioned, mm -hmm. you know, Dr. MC and other senior brothers in the area. They petitioned the Minister of Interior. Mm -hmm. Up till date, nothing has happened. People were brutalized, their properties were destroyed. People were attacked in their rooms by the mm -hmm. police. And this thing happened under a democracy. Mm -hmm. And as I sit here with you, not even a response from the Minister of Interior after the people. To the, the petition? Now yes. In fact, apparently, the I, I believe they were teasing, they wanted the people to engage in violence, and our discussions with them were that they were not going to engage in that as law-abiding citizens of the country. <coughs> if they were brutalized by the police who are supposed to be providing protection for them, it doesn't matter which political party they belong. Okay. And we didn't want to read politics into it because I was being very careful. Mm. I wanted to deal with the police as an institution. Okay. Even that we could have, not the regional minister made a single comment on that, not even visiting the area. The Metropolitan Chief Executive never visited the area. I mean, and for me, that is the height and of... And what was of, the cause of uh, what happened? What do you say was, is was, the, on the That the police went to effect an arrest of a woman. When the police went to that area, according to the police, that some young people beat the policewoman who went there to effect the arrest. Mm. I will not condone with any 
between of anybody, let alone a police officer. What police usually do is that they could have indeed done their investigation mm. to identify those who did that. In fact, the area has a chief, we have in Yep Changna. They could have gotten in touch with them and the assembly members to provide them information leading to the arrest of the individual who engaged in that. But it's like they use one brush to, brush to paint the entire area. They didn't do that. They went there as early as 2.30 a.m. People were sleeping with their families. They attacked and were beating people left, right, and center. This is not professional. What police officers do is that when you went there and that incident happened, you could have done your own investigation mm -hmm. to identify those who did that and pick those people. They didn't do that. They went to the area. And let's look, I have videos and pictures when I visited the place. They went there, brutalized people. Some are still in the hospital. We still have expenses to pay. And the police, even on top of that, are also pursuing that they are going to prison. And nothing is happening. The people petitioned the government through the, the Ministry of Interior. Not even a response okay. in a country that is supposed to charter the part of democracy. And I really don't think that it is healthy. I'm sure they have heard you at this point. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Mr. IGP, James Okon Boinu, and uh, to everybody listening and to us this Interior, morning. And the Ministry of actually. And uh, Mr. Ambrose Daring. I know he's a lawyer and uh, he's a law-abiding uh, gentleman. So. Let's see what comes out of it. Eriko, how are you doing? I'm doing you're, fantastic. You're not from how that are you? side of town. You, you ha only have uh, marital <laughs> connections from there. Yes. <laughs> he's, uh, a, he's a in law. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I, I do not have. Anyway, good morning to all the viewers. Good morning to my friend, Eid Mubarak. Eid Karim. I hope he prayed for me whilst it was, it was first. And, and then to yourselves. Uh, and to the good people of Antioch South. Uh, mm. Good morning to them. Um, I do not have uh, any clarity. I mean, this is actually the first time I'm hearing about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when these things do happen, uh, I feel that the most important thing to do is to allow the authorities to investigate. I mm -hmm. mean, if it's become uh, some kind of aberration and they haven't gone out there to find out what has happened, they should do so. Mm -hmm. So that brings some kind of uh, clarity <coughs> to the matter. And then also, in any society, a community like that, it's important that we're able to mm -hmm. engender peace and, and unity. Uh, police brutality cannot be countenanced by anybody, but I feel that uh, there has to be some more investigation. Mm -hmm. And once it's come to the fore, uh, I believe that the authorities would, would work at it in earnest. Okay. Uh, how are the Fantiago people doing? They're doing very well. I just got back uh, a couple of nights ago. Mm. And, um, yeah, fine. They're doing well. Okay. <laughs> I, I genuinely wish him well in his NPP parliamentary primaries. I think that the NDC equipping him would be an interesting thing. In <laughs> but for his MPP parliamentary primaries, but you also I, don't don't mind him. I, I, wish, I wish him well, no, of no, course. No, no, I'm saying him. that I genuinely wish him well mm -hmm. as far as their primaries you know, so, so let's let it end there. Yes, <laughs> once, <laughs> once, inshallah, but we'll, we'll whip him. There are two it's, of them, he and my good friend, Lejo Kuku Jay-Z, that I say that would, within their primary is fine, but inshallah we'll whip them because there are a lot of seats we have to take from them. <laughs> I, I hear you. Dr. Okubo Dr. is Deputy Health Minister. Good morning yeah, to you. See, I mean, you know, you can, you can wish all you want. Wherever uh, he is, tell him that his smoke is with me. Okubo, so wherever you You haven't given me a smoke. You are I, going I tell to promise him, him I'll okay. give him a smoke. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, Tala, the Electoral Commission has served notice that uh, an IPAC meeting will happen tomorrow to present updates on the... Uh, the new register that the Electoral Commission is decided on to compile. Will the NDC attend and have you seen the notice? Well, the NDC has always been a law-abiding political party. The NDC at any point in time have been yearning for this APAC mm -hmm. meeting. The NDC has been yearning for it. Mm -hmm. At least some of these things should have happened genuinely and sincerely before any decision to be taken by the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. I have heard a lot of argument that has been made about the independence of the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission has the right to do what they engage in, as if the, 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 the Constitution mm -hmm. was not you know, conscious of the fact that you could have Electoral Commission Mm -hmm. you know, you know, leadership who may want to abuse that so-called, you know, independence to take decisions. The NDC has always asked, you remember the decision to compile this, this new register was, mm -hmm. was a decision that never involved the NDC as a political party. Recently, the MPP regional secretary said that the meeting was held on 25th, I guess, mm -hmm. April. 
and, and it was at that meeting that they took the decision to, to compile the new register. Little mm. did he know that the particular amendment, you know, the decision to amend the electoral rules to exclude other, you know, breeder documents and include only the national identification, mm. you know, card and the passport was a decision taken on the 25th of their meeting. Little did he know that the CI was actually laid in parliament long before that particular submission. So clearly, the MPP National Secretary was actually lying to the people of this country. The Electoral Commission, Jean Mensah, and my lecturer, Bosman Asara, have been consistently untruthful to the people of this country. And look, I have said this and I'll say but this. You're not being fair to them they by have been calling them untruthful. Absolutely untruthful. There was a meeting that was held, and at the meeting, no decision was taken. The Electoral Commission issued a statement, a statement altered and sanctioned by this very leadership that they took decision A, B, C, D, only for the NBC to point out to them what happened. They had to apologize. They had to retract that. So was it deliberate? Yes, it was deliberate. Because why? If you sit on this program, Johnny, mm -hmm. and I haven't said, Johnny, your shirt is nice, and the next day, by the time I leave here, you issued a statement and said, on the very program that Mutala and his good friend and Johnny had, Mutala said that the shirt or the dress of Johnny was so beautiful, mm -hmm. when I never said that. That is an outright lie. Look, if there is any problem in this country, Jean Mensah and Bosman Asari and the president will be held absolutely accountable. This country is a country that belongs to all of us. Mm -hmm. We have nowhere to go. The sanctity of the electoral processes is something we must all guide. Mm -hmm. It is not just about compiling. Is that not why the meeting is being, is being convened to, you know, you to know, ventilate some of these things? You know, what they, the John Boydou, for example, says that at the last meeting, uh, your party's Deputy General Secretary, Peter Bwamo Tokuno, uh, chickened out of the meeting and, and told them in their faces and chickened out of the, the meeting. The very John Boydou who lied that the, elector, the decision to amend the electoral rules took place on the 25th meeting, when indeed nothing like, like that happened, when he didn't even know that the elected seer was laid in parliament long before that said meeting. You think I should take his word. But in any case, why? Does it even make sense to you that the very electoral commission mm -hmm. who has taken decisions and they have been very consistent that they are going to engage on the electoral <coughs> processes to <coughs> compile a new register, mm -hmm. whether it creates chaos and anarchy in this country or not. Look, what the electoral commission is engaged in is what can better be described as cartoon scenario reality. They bring in the NBC and other political parties when they know that they have already taken their decision. So come out, come and make the noise you want to make. We will go ahead with what we want to do anyway. Listen to the leadership of the because electoral commission. Because they are commission. independent. The independent must not, must not be exercised capriciously. The framers of the constitution and the laws governing the electoral conduct in this country mm. were conscious of the fact that the electoral commission ought to be independent. Right. But you exercise that independent with some understanding. There is no, it is not out of nothing that the, the previous electoral commissioners mm. and the activities engaged in the electoral commission in compiling registers, mm. not entirely new registers, that they engage other parties. Can I ask you a simple question, Johnny? In your home, you are the landlord. You have a wife in the house. Mm. You have kids in the house. The fact that you are the landlord doesn't mean that you must take decisions and impose them on your wife and your kids. You have the, the power, the capacity to do that. Mm. But if you want peace and harmony and tranquility to move on in the house, you would have to involve people whose decisions indeed will ensure that you take a decision that will near to the benefit of everybody. Mm. That is not what the Electoral Commission, Jean Mensah, and my lecturer, Dr. Bosman Asari, are mm. engaged in. I have always said, that he's, he was a fantastic lecturer, mm. but he's a disastrous electoral commission deputy commissioner because some of us have had conversations with people like him and we're so elated that when he was, he was appointed, mm. we are so disappointed that you find some of this- Because he's not doing what you most, want. No, no, we are expecting them to do what is supposed to be done. The NBC never said that when you call an APAC meeting, the NBC's, what the NBC wants is what you should do. Why didn't they involve other political parties right from the time the decisions that they were going to take? If they think that they have the right to do what they do, then they, did, they don't need to call any other. They say you are beating they, war drums. They why? War drums? Mm -hmm. We are pointing out to them and the people of this country, and particularly the moral society, that we have seen what happened in other countries, and we are just cautioning them that we should avoid what happened. Look, in those countries that you had electoral disputes that unfortunately led to chaos and anarchy, 
These were the concerns that people didn't indeed raise. We are raising those, those concerns, concerns, telling the Electoral Commission, telling Jim Mensa and Bosman Asari, and telling His Excellency the President that this country is the only country that we have. Don't let us chatter that part of chaos and anarchy. We have seen many countries in the world. The Vice President that says fail, we will have this election based on records and comparisons of what we have done in I mean, the for past, him, the, the list, not violent. The least you talk about, what record? I mean, for him, I don't want to even talk about him. I have just finished with my Ramadan, and I don't want to, because if I want to talk about him, I would say certain things that people will question whether indeed my Ramadan was actually sincere. Look, <laughs> when we talk about record, he should be put somewhere, absolutely somewhere. Somewhere where? <laughs> I think that my brother will find out where we can, we can put him. But, to come to the very important issue, finally, we have so, never so had American we right. have never had any problem with the electoral commission indeed inviting us to APAC. Why would you invite us to APAC when consistently we have said that the decisions that we have taken are decisions that you won't change? So why invite us to come to APAC to do what? If you value the contributions of the NDC and other political parties, mm -hmm. if you value the relationship that exists between the electoral commission and other political parties mm -hmm. in terms of they being major stakeholders as to what decision you take, conscious of the fact that you are that independent mm -hmm. as granted by law, that independence must be exercised with some decency. Mm. It must not be capriciously exercised. Mm. Now, why would you invite the NDC and other political parties again to an IPAC meeting when you have consistently stated that you have taken the, the US embassy will be there, Occupy Ghana. I see so many others will be at that particular meeting. So you see, it, we it's, did, a, it's a we, good point we to didn't, meet. We didn't even need to get to that place. We didn't even need to get to that place. Tell me today, we are left with just barely six months to, to to go into the elections, mm -hmm. or six, seven months. We still do not know which register we are going to use to conduct the elections. Because you have an electoral commissioner who thinks that she must speak from one different side of the map when she was the, the executive director of IEA. And now that she has become an electoral commissioner, she must. Look, I will tell you okay. that Jean Mensah is nothing but the minister in charge of ensuring that Nanado wins the 2020 election. That's, that's, but, that's not correct. That is a fact. She is the electoral her commissioner. Actions, her actions have proven consistently, her actions have proven consistently. I just told you. She's breaking the law. I just told she you. Breaking the law? I just, she's she been, breaking the law? She's been lying. But she's not breaking the I law. I said she's been lying. The last thing you respect from an electoral commission of a country such as Ghana is an electoral commission who has some respect for the truth. Okay. I have just told you, Thank you. when a meeting was held, mm. when there was nothing like in the agenda, a decision that was taken, no decision was taken, only for the electoral commission to issue a statement saying that we took a decision at this meeting. The NDC pointed out to them that such a decision mm. was never taken. They never discussed that. They had to apologize. But, she, but, she deliberately but, but meeting to procedures, see meeting who's... procedures would dictate that if you see something in there that was not at the meeting, at the next meeting, you get a chance to correct the votes and proceedings. When the electoral commission has consistently said that they have taken a decision, they are not changing it. Ah, Johnny, if I have a, if I have a decision to take, here, here, you have leadership of this station. You are an employee of TV3. Mm -hmm. Now, you host this program. Now, TV3 decides that, yes, because we are the leadership, this program must be held and we have these conditions without they even discussing that with you. Do you think that that would be fair? Okay. The fact that they have the power to take Thank decisions you. and the fact that you hold that Thank program, you. they ought to involve you. Thank you. Let's go to Eric. Eric, so Mutala, perhaps the NDC, seems unhappy about the Electoral Commission. I remember that you have consistently said that you do not speak for the Electoral Commission. But the impression seems to be created over and over again that there's something that the MPP and the Electoral Commission are doing together in harmony which will obviously culminate into seeing President Akufuado re-elected. And that's why all of this is happening. <laughs> so that a meeting is called, something is not decided upon, mm -hmm. but it's published as decided, and when it's pointed out, it is reversed. And that doesn't show truth, integrity, and that independence. And that's why they are worried. Are you equally well, worried? I think you've inferred too much uh, propaganda from the NDC. But you see, I'm actually worried about the posturing of the NDC. Mm. And I also reiterate the fact that, I, as I sit here, I do not speak for the Electoral Commission, mm. and I will not intend to do so. But the facts are very clear. Mm. The Electoral Commission, as it stands in our constitution, is meant to be a body that is mandated to, one, run the electoral affairs of this country, right. 
and by extension compile a register mm -hmm. based on the processes that it actually decides to take so, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the IPAC as it stands is not a decision-making body for the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of IPAD is as a design of convention, whereby most of the uh, stakeholders, mm -hmm. uh, and primarily the uh, political parties, uh, are given an opportunity to engage with the Electoral Commission right. to arrive at decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why the framers of the Constitution, in their wisdom, made sure that the um, the independence of the Electoral Commission, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. is actually enshrined, is as a result of some of these conversations as to what should be done and what should not be done. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that they actually presume that at one point in time, there's going to be a stalemate mm -hmm. like there is now. Mm -hmm. And I've gone on and asked this question, and a very practical one. Like, let's assume that the NDC takes this posture mm -hmm. of, regardless of what happens, regardless of all the evidence that has been adduced, they still insist that they do not want the Electoral Commission to go ahead and compile a new register. Mm -hmm. And another political party, let's assume the MPP, mm -hmm. decides that, well, we also insist that, based on the evidence that has been adduced, mm -hmm. we will support the position of the Electoral Commission to compile a new register. What happens? This is still me. So this whole conversation around um, the Electoral Commission being in cahoots, or mm -hmm. there's some kind of connivance between the Electoral Commission and the NPP. It's the most preposterous argument ever. The now, if you want to, listen, this, let me, listen, you see, Johnny, let me speak so that I'll make my point. You see, it's preposterous to the point that, mm -hmm. you see, the same NDC, under the watch of former President John Mahama, mm -hmm. stated categorically that the Electoral Commissioner at the time, mm -hmm. Was, uh, should be allowed to do its, her job by virtue of the fact that they felt that some people were actually stampeding her in making decisions. Did you raise questions of no, dishonesty but, no, at the but time? No, but it, it's important. It, 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 it is important that we situate this conversation that, that's why I'm in a certain asking. level. They are, they are attached with a certain level, to it. But yeah, they can do anything that they want. They are a political party. Mm. They have parochial interests. Okay. Right? And I'm not taken in by this thing. What is most I mean, important to me, even when it comes to this conversation, is this attempt to almost try and intimidate Ghanaians to the fact that, well, uh, if the Electoral Commission do not do what we want, mm. uh, it's a recipe for disaster and chaos. And then some of them have even gone on to say the most ridiculous things. And I expect that the media would even call them to it, mm. to say that, well, they have a revolutionary past and all of these things, and that by virtue of that, they will unleash chaos in this country. That is dangerous. Who said that? Oh, a lot of your people Who have said it. Right? You see, but when you, go, oh, when you go further and have this conversation around the Electoral Commission and the compilation of the register, right? Mm -hmm. The MPP's position is that, listen, since 1992, mm -hmm. every single improvement in the electoral process, in terms of the, the voters register, in terms of systems that have been put in place, are things that have been either put forward by the MPP Right, the uh, uh, biometric register and all of those things, from moving from a, an opaque ballot box to a transparent one, and all of these things are things that were actually propounded by the NPP. Right, so time in the immemorial, we have been consistent with our the improvement of the electoral process in this country. If, if now we would broken, sit down. We would it? listen. Listen. You see, it that, is not about. Mm. I'm not about going into the merits and demerits of why the Electoral Commission wants to compile but, a new but register. If you it, but even if you support it, but we support, you should stand for something. Yes, we support, we support the fact that the Electoral Commission is meant to be an independent body. It has the mandate to make decisions. Mm -hmm. It has a mandate to compile a new register if it's so dim fit. It has other mandates that it's meant to do. Right? The NDC, one breath, I saw a document, I don't know how authentic it is. Mm. I've actually uh, started proceedings in the, in the Supreme Court trying to uh, get some reliefs on if the Electoral Commissioner is even allowed to compile a new register or not. Okay. Right? You the other NDC is in court. I've seen a document. Okay. I'm saying that I, I don't know if how authentic that okay. is. Right. right. They started going on the streets trying to demonstrate against the compilation of a new register. Now, the question that we should be asking them, how come they are so insistent that a new register is, a is, is uh, at a detriment to the cause of the 
NDC. What is in that register that they are so scared of for a new register to be compiled? The because you see, based it. on the Electoral Commissioner ESO mm. has come out to state that they have ch technical challenges with the existing register. And that they have gone ahead and said that, given the opportunity, these are the things that we are going to do to improve the register. Mm. Right? Now, if we want to go the way they are going, there are a flash of examples. Jean Mensa, um, uh, when she became, uh, what do you call it, electoral commissioner, mm -hmm. had invited the NDC to several meetings. Some of the meetings that they are talking about, they are complaining about, they walked out. Now, how can you go to a meeting, walk out of the meeting, a decision is taken, right? And then you decide that you do not want to go by the tenets of that particular meeting. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. Now, so for a political party, right, that mm -hmm. seems to suggest that you have democracy at the heart of the whatever you do, mm -hmm. right? And you decide that the same organization, the same institution that is meant to superintend over the electoral affairs of this country would call a meeting. And by dint of you having certain preconceived or mm -hmm. misconceptions about that particular uh, EC, decide that you don't want to attend the meetings okay, so, whatsoever. So, let me, so let, how can let, you let, now let engage... Ask, let me ask you a question. How right. can you now engage a, a commission, right, that you have... Total disregard for. Let me, and let some me, of the ask, words that they you, use. Let me ask you a question. I think that, as far as I'm concerned, mm. you see, when we sit on this. Let, let me ask you a question. Because you are the referee. Eric, let me right? ask you. Let me you ask need you to put question. them to strict proof in let, some of the let, things that they that's say. That's why I want exactly. to put you to strict proof as well, because I tried with him as well. Now, the, the question I want to ask is this The Electoral Commission uh, had used, and not Madame Jean Mensa and Dr. Asari Bosman and all of that. I'm talking about the Electoral Commission as an institution had used the same register, and this is the argument that the NDC makes, the same register to elect a president, 275 parliamentarians, create six new regions, do local level uh, mm -hmm. elections, and in December, if we all heard the electoral commissioners say that the register is credible. Now, if the register has issues with technological upgrade, do you scrap the whole document see, or is, do you upgrade the parts that require see, an upgrade? Johnny, this, question, I, this I, question that you're asking me, really, is a question that needs to go to the Electoral Commission. <laughs> the Electoral Commission has come out and answered these things for time and a number, ah. right? One, issues to do with the credibility of the register. Mm. The stakes, as we speak, are higher, right? Mm. They claim that even the vendors that actually... Uh, they procure the mm -hmm. uh, existing mm -hmm. equipment from have certain challenges and some of the uh, operating systems that they are using are actually a cake as mm -hmm. we speak, right? Now, the conversations surrounding either they can be an upgrade or they can use the existing register mm -hmm. and all that is a decision that is taken at a technical level. Right. Now, based on issues of uh, technicalities mm -hmm. and even issues to do with cost, they decide that, listen, for us to even try and do an upgrade, mm -hmm. right, we might as well compile a, a brand new register. That is a decision that has been taken. Mm. And you see, there's one thing that... that I, does I does that make sense to you? It makes sense to me. Okay. Because they have, the, they have the mandate, right? And if they have done all the audits and have come to a, a conclusion that compilation of a new register makes more sense than trying to upgrade an existing one that had issues to start with. Mm. Listen. Imani says, look, when, you, don't, when, need to, you when, don't need to make that investment listen, because it's a waste of money. I, Imani, you see, when you guys, I do not want to speak against think tanks and all of those things, right? Mm. Imani is one aspect of our general conversation. Mm. They are a think tank. They contribute to uh, civil society mm. conversations and everything. I have no challenge with that. Okay. But in the same breath, there are other people the mm. other stakeholders who believe that the position of the uh, Electoral Commission, okay. even including the New Patriotic Party, we support <laughs> the completion of a new register. Mm. We do. Now, until a time where it becomes almost impossible mm -hmm. or there's, uh, the, there's new evidence is adduced as to if it's impossible to compile a new register, mm -hmm. I think a proper decision will be made because I keep asking this question, right? And mm -hmm. this question that I keep asking is a very, if you like, a very layman's question, which is, listen, in a case mm. that between the two major political parties, there's a stalemate, there's a disagreement as to which route to go. Mm. What do you expect to happen? To be go by the, 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 what the NDC wants or go by what the MPP wants? No. And that is why it is imperative. Mm. And you see, any time we have this so, conversation so the about... Commission, that, the Electoral Commission, the, the electoral commission is does not pander 
to the whims and caprices okay. of the NDC or the MP. Great. So the electoral right? commission. It doesn't. The electoral commission. It's meant to the, make the decision. The reason why, you okay. see. The, the electoral why, commission, Eric, sorry. The electoral commission is independent. Mm -hmm. The electoral commission does not bow to the NDC or the MPP. Yes. It's supposed to stay neutral. But the electoral commission works to the people of Ghana. Exactly. Funded by the people of Ghana exactly. largely and maybe our donors and yeah. all of that. Are you suggesting to me that the MPP is going with the Electoral Commission because the Electoral Commission says we will compile, or the MPP has found something wrong with the present register, no, which is, is it, why is it, you are calling I mean, for a new register kind, and supporting these, that call? These, these kinds of questions really ah. are not the kind of questions for a platform like No, but if you're ah. supporting so, something, if you're asking, supporting listen, something <laughs> you're supporting, you must, you you're must supporting, support it listen, in principle. The principle hmm. is very simple. The principle is that we say on platforms like this, when Obama came to Africa and came to Ghana to be precise, mm -hmm. and everybody was going about espousing this whole idea of you need to strengthen your institutions, and instead of uh, 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 creating um, a strong men, you're creating uh, strong institutions and everything. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing here is an experiment, a democratic experiment, that suggests that we shouldn't be playing with institutions like the Electoral Commission. Because an entity, but by either the what, MPP by what do you or mean? the NDC, no, by, we shouldn't play. because okay. it's a, going to be a bad precedent, hmm. right? Where we allow the views of one political party Have you or the MPP found anything way wrong in, with the present register, which is why you support the call for the MPP for it's, it's consistently. The MPP consistently had been an advocate for improvement in our electoral process. And I gave you an example. Do you, do you now, so in this particular case, mm. right, it, you see, you have to strike a fine balance, okay. right? And I don't think that this whole thing is set in, in stone, okay. right? You need to create a fine balance as to, okay, now that the NDC are claiming that there is something in connivance between the MPP and the, e, right. and the EC, which is preposterous to start with. So, so the okay. first conversation is that even the register itself, when Madame Charlotte say was uh, being spoken to about even the register, it's, she's on record to have said that Ahmad Sule at the time could actually get access to that particular register, right, and manipulate it. It was it's on record, mm. ah. right? We had issues to do with people where Abu Ramadan had taken the issue to the Supreme Court for certain and, and to, to, be, to, oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. to be expunged yeah, from the right. register. The NHS right? registrants. Afari Jan, it's on record to have said that even the if you look at the population of this country and the number of people who find themselves in the register, it is almost like a statistical anomaly. It's, never it's there. He said it. Where? You know, so over the period, we've gone through the process and said, okay, while well, we have run several elections with it, the EC itself has come out and said that, listen, based on what we have mm. on record and the, the technical aspects of even the, uh, the equipment that they have mm. and the vendors that they have, right, they think that it will be more prudent to compile a new register. I do not understand uh, Eric, why... You, you are, I, yes, I do not understand, why, you, I do you, understand why... I do not understand why the person. NDC Eric, Eric, are you, so averse, Eric, are so scared of a compilation of a new register. Eric, and it's important I'll that they tell, tell us me. exactly what's in there. Eric, okay. but, I but, but you have not, you have not yeah. answered my question. What's though? the question? My question is that, what have you found wrong with, with the present register, witness changing? And maybe, because you are, because you are an IT person too, mm -hmm. Now, let's assume you have a laptop computer mm -hmm. that you find not to be working according to the speed you want. Do you toss the laptop away or do you upgrade, for example, a software, maybe the you processor see, speed, the hard yeah, drive? Yeah. Ooh, I, I'm just trying to understand Listen, I do that, not that have, bit of it. I do not have <laughs> an in-depth knowledge of the systems that the Electoral okay. Commission is using. Okay. But even per that argument, right, if I'm going by a certain ever like naive or layman's perspective. The EC has come back to say mm. that per the amount of work that needs to be done mm -hmm. and the cost of even doing the upgrade. Listen carefully. Mm -hmm. You know, and in this case I'm not speaking for the EC. Right. They believe strongly. And they also have experts that you see in this country we have a challenge with these people banding themselves, going around and calling themselves experts. You mean in, in the EC. You mean in, in the EC. Mm -hmm. In the EC they are also experts. Okay. They are people who are technical people, right, mm. who have done this thing over a period, who have experiences and expertise in different facets of industry. Mm. And I have also come to a, a certain conclusion that it is prudent to compile a new register rather than do an upgrade per the existing 
equipments and components that they have. Mm -hmm. And to the effect that even the vendor, right, mm -hmm. has been on record to have said that the existing operating systems are not archaic. Uh, you're not using them anymore. Yes. You're not talking about but, but for example, that's what I'm saying. The document, the document I've read it from, from Imani, hold on for me, Botella. Okay. I'm giving Eric enough time because yeah, he He's supports. Been talking. Yeah, no, I, I'll give you. But you're also well. being talking. Now, Eric, the, the conversation that and the documents that I've seen from Imani, mm. for example, suggest that that comparison between Thales and Smartmatic mm -hmm. and the Electoral Commission are choosing the former. Mm. And they are pointing in fingers of integrity at them and saying that, look, you have conducted elections elsewhere. It's been fraught with um, difficulties. Mm -hmm. You have been cited for corruption and all of that. Mm -hmm. This is not a worthy vendor whose word we must take. Mm -hmm. And so they are surprised that the Electoral Commission is taking advice from them to the extent that they are saying that compiling a new register is cheaper than upgrading a system that's already there. And that's where... Yeah, the confusion that, comes the, the in. Point, so, is he, the point would be very simple. I think that we are delivering this particular point, right? There's a reason. There's wisdom in the reason why the independence of the Electoral Commission should be held sacrosanct. It should be there. So, you are supporting them even, we are where supporting, they, even if they are no, making no, a wrong decision. No, but you see, the thing is that we make, we go to IPAC, we have platforms like we have right now. And we have had calls, even over the period, mm. to have some issues with the Electoral Commission. Okay. And we are saying that the IPAC as it stands is not a decision-making body for the Electoral Commission. It's by convention mm. to ensure that most of the stakeholders or majority of the stakeholders okay. will come to a certain consensus, <coughs> right? And so that there will be progress. Okay. Now, Thank if you. you want to stampede, yeah. mm. right, no, no, you want to talk. stampede Sorry. the EC mm. with the way the NDC is going about it, and even trying to promise a certain level of, and, 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 and they are going to endanger the Ghanaian people because they have this revolution passed and that they can unleash yeah, I think you have said all of that already. All of Thank those you. Things. As far as Mutala, I'm concerned, step in, step that in is for not me. something that yeah, we should yeah, countenance. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you should call them out for yeah, that. Mutala, step in for me. Yeah, yeah, repeatedly. Repeatedly. Uh, no. I have heard the MPP communicators who okay. argued that President Mahama once said that they should allow the Electoral Commission, mm. the Electoral Commission is independent. Let me make this point very clearly. And I expect him from now. They won't peddle such falsehood. President Mahama spoke in the matter of the logo for the EC. Mm. It had nothing to do with the register. It had but, to, well, please, please, can I finish? Can I, allow, can I finish? Too. It had to do with the logo. Uh -huh. That was the time that President Mahama said, they should allow the electoral mm -hmm. commission. The NBC never Question MPP raising issues about sanctifying the electoral register. That is Re not true. Please, please, Even please. Even when we went please, to please, Eric, please, Eric, please, Eric, 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 made a point about how police brutalized people in Changli. Mm. And I said it had to do with the police institution. In his comments on the matter, he said that we should allow the institutions to work. Mm. If the police did that, they, it ought to be investigated. In this matter, he's saying that the NBC brutalized them. Of course, there's a, a gentleman that Please, has Eric, I listen to you. Can I? You know, Eric, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. Eric, Eric, I don't think you are being fair to You have actually had more time But you've even interrupted me more than Mutala No, but because I gave you more time. Your 10 minutes was uninterrupted. The extra time was what? Johnny, that's yeah, right. he, he, wondered, he wondered what the fear of the NDC is with regards to this register. They have, you should be asking your majority leader. Did you hide something in there? Hold on. No. Then how did we lose the election? If something was hidden, they wouldn't have lost the election. He should be asking the majority leader, mm. who said without any shame, that if they change the register, the NDC will never win an election. The majority leader should be telling the people of this country what at all is in the so-called new register they want to compile, not the NDC. We never hid anything there. If we did, we wouldn't have lost the election. He also said that the NDC, you know, uh, should allow the Electoral Commission to work. The Electoral Commission is independent. I have pointed out to you mm -hmm. that the Electoral Commission has been consistent in its inconsistency that with regards to the reasons why they want to compile a new register. Mm -hmm. You remember initially, they said that there were names in the register which ought not to be in the register. Right. They also said that some people are dead and gone. Mm. Perhaps the Electoral Commission didn't realize that we're dealing with a biometric register. Mm. It doesn't matter the number of people in that register who are no more. Mm. You cannot go and vote. In any case, the position the NDC took 
is consistent with the position taken by over 20 civil society organizations. Now, they have reduced the argument to be an NDC against NPP. It is not that. The position we have taken is the position taken not just by Imani, but other 19 or more yeah, civil society. Please, civil society can I finish? Can I finish? Uh, Eric, can, I, can, I, can, I finish? Eric, can I finish? Can I finish? For you. Can I finish? But can I finish? Most, of, this, most the, of these civil society organizations now are beginning to have affiliations with political parties. I'm saying that why? Oh, then the NDC is so loved that you have over 20 civil society organizations who have all raised concerns about the attitude, the posture of Jim Mensah and the NPP. I am saying that it cannot be an argument to be reduced to an NDC NPP. Mm -hmm. Now, he talks about the fact that the Electoral Commission should be allowed to do their work. The Electoral Commission is independent. The NDC never questioned the independence of the Electoral Commission. Even when well, we were... What in, are you questioning? We have... Dan, in, not oh, hold job. on. We have consistently said mm. that despite the fact that you are independent per law, mm. that independence, that the exercise of that independence mm. must not be done capriciously. That exercise must be done, taking into consideration mm. the various stakeholders. Suspicion. Suspicion is one thing that has plunged several nations into chaos. Electoral results and electoral processes is not a one-day thing. Mm. All the processes leading to the election are issues that the NDC has been consistent. Okay. Let me ask you this question, Johnny. Uh, let's, 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 let's 30, 30 seconds, 30 seconds Johnny. 30 seconds. Mm. The Electoral Commission argument is that you cannot vote. With, they don't trust the, electoral, the register. And suddenly, since December, they trusted it. After December, they no longer trust the register. Nothing happened to the register after December, but they no longer trust it. Now, because they think that there are people who have, whose names are on the register who ought not to be there. How did they identify that there are names on the register that are not supposed to be on the register? If okay. they were able to identify mm -hmm. that, they should just sit down and remove those names. Okay, thank you. That's enough. They should remove uh, the messages. Which of the messages are we, are we removing? <laughs> I'm telling you, we are not removing any message. Yeah, we're, we we're, them we're presenting the full thing. Okay. Yes. Let's go. Abbas Amogo is writing to us from office. So thank God NDC is finally in court, but the advocacy against a new register still stands. We pray the justices of the Supreme Court will not be biased. NDC will definitely win this case. No war in Ghana. Good morning, Johnny. Please tell the finance minister and President Kufuado that we, the Tesha, students who are on the student loan scheme haven't received our money up till now we need the money to manage our expenses because we went for a loan to pay our fees so we have to pay it back and also we're spending too much money on data for this e-learning thing and for my institution for example we are starting exams on first june so we really need the money thank you Kofi Emmanuel writes to us from Kanishi. good morning tv3 why is the ndc against the new register i think the ndc has a vested interest in the register. Hashtag new voters register now. Abdulaziz Nindo uh, uh, Katochi in Tamale. John Nilante Vanderpoy. This whole MPP NDC EC fiasco is obviously informed by the Electoral Commission's decision to compile a new voters register. In as much as EC uh, is constitutionally mandated to make decisions, it's deemed crucial. They are equally entitled to their service to Ghana. However, Ghana has nothing to lose if a new register is not compiled. What's more, a bigger percentage of the population do not support the said decision. EC should just reverse their decision and make the dust settle. Hello, good morning, Johnny. The MPP man is making noise. We, the private school teachers, are still home with, with uh, receiving our salary since uh, we haven't received our sal salary since March and also the school feeding program workers are also not being paid for the last five months. Good morning. My name is Caleb Amwa from Kaswa Kakraba. Good morning. Now all Ghanaians have realized that we actually don't need a new register. If anyone had told me we will be rushing for new register at the time coronavirus, I wouldn't believe it. Come December 7, there will be wonders. Good morning. This whole register issue has really taught uh, the ordinary Ghanaian the difference between the two main political parties in Ghana. One fighting for the rights of the larger group of ordinary Ghanaians and one fighting for just a handful of people in the society. And trust me, we will vote according to that Richard from Tema. Good morning, TV3. I'm sure I'm very sorry about what Honorable Eric is saying about EC New Register. Is it this register that we used in 2016 to elect uh, the president, why is that uh, that they want to change it? Okay, uh, let me take the last one. Good morning to TV3 show. The 
independence of independence of electoral commission is unshakable therefore political parties should allow them to carry out their mandate people who are in charge of electoral commission are also Ghanaians. that'll be all for okay the thank you this morning. uh I, on the front page of the bnft uh the plight of private school teachers and it's a matter that i've been passionate about over the past month or so because i consistently have had the experience of encountering them those who say they got their last salaries in March, some got half of it. They are not getting anything in April. They are not sure of May. They are not sure if the schools are opening, reopening school uh, soon. And they are stuck. They are literally on life support. And they are, they are staying indoors and to die. What help is there for them, Eric? <laughs> um, I think that... If anybody finds themselves in this situation, it's unfortunate, it's terrible. Uh, this whole COVID-19 uh, pandemic has exposed a lot of businesses and institutions to uh, these challenges. Um, the plight of the uh, teachers in the private schools is it's, it's terrible. Uh, I know that some of the schools, I'm not sure how many of them, are still engaged in some online classes mm -hmm. and some mm -hmm. parents are being asked to pay fees. I, I'm, I'm paying. Uh, so uh, I don't know what arrangements are there mm -hmm. for the others that are not being paid. Mm -hmm. um, what really is uh, the case is that you can extend the argument to people who work in the hospitality right. industry, hotels, right. mm -hmm. restaurants. Uh, uh, last time I was uh, reading um, some communication from the vehicle and car high mm. association mm. Mm. all of those people all these people are private sector entities that mm. as a result of the uh, the restrictions mm. and then the the global pandemic uh, have are facing challenges mm -hmm. uh, government as you know in the last uh, week or so has launched the uh, the stimulus package for small micro and mm. medium businesses um, i don't know how the arrangement is going to be made if there's some uh, stimulus that would go to uh, private schools. Um, and then we have to be very candid when we have these conversations. I mean, because there's so many different people. Again, apart from that, you have a certain uh, sense of the informal nature of our economy. Mm -hmm. So there are people mm -hmm. who are actually suppliers or indirect beneficiaries mm -hmm. of, 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 of the system. Support. So even right. the woman who sells wache by next to the school mm -hmm. or cocoa next to the school is... Uh, affected depressed uh, because of the fact that the school is shut you know so these are not normal times uh, whilst I would uh, empathize with the mm. plight of the private teachers I think that maybe the st next stage is to have maybe an entity like the GES or the Ghana Education Service to uh, look at that because now it looks as if that uh, some of these things have to be looked at sector by sector right and hoping that in the next few weeks uh, life will come back mm. to a certain normalcy. Because even this whole conversation around private schools and public schools mm. is one that so, is Somebody raging. is suggesting that you take 50% of public school teachers' salaries. Yeah, and give to well, I mean, teachers. that would create uh, another form of uh, chaos, if mm. you like, because it is not the fault of the uh, public schools, right. for instance, for this uh, COVID to ha mm. happen. So if you're going to now... Um, have a way of taking part of their their, their salaries mm. for somebody else. Mm. I don't think it's practical. We can't what, do that. What about, we can what think about, about innovative would ways. You, would you support, for example, I remember that the conversation about SNIT, mm -hmm. and for those of them who are on uh, insurance policies mm -hmm. or packages, for example, would have a bit of their monies. I mean, if you are saving money for the future and you are in hard times now, that money, a bit of that money should come to you. SNIT says it will be illegal for them to support people because it is not in the law. But if I, you are keeping my money for the future and I won't be around to enjoy the money in the future, I, I, what's I, the point? I, I know that we have some legal challenges when it comes to that mm. because all of these institutions are set up with specific acts. Mm -hmm. And now if you want to change that, then necessarily you still have to go through that process that actually established the institution to do so. Mm. Uh, I'm hoping that we can find innovative ways of doing so. Uh, but we have to be very realistic because mm -hmm. you can extend you can extend the the challenges. Mm. I mean, government in its own way 
has found ways of trying to alleviate some of these issues, which is the provision of the stimulus act. Stimulus we are, package. We are talking about the 50% cut in electricity, water, and even the, if you go to the if you go to the for water, if you go to the the hotels say they are paying for water. The hotels say they are paying for water. Well, I mean, you can have some isolated issues, but by and large, some of these things, you see. When we're having a general conversation, you, it, it's, it doesn't really serve any purpose to bring in some of this. Because things. I got that because, information this morning. Yes, so but you got that information. I haven't. Okay. And there's no indication that because you said it, that means that... The waterfront water you know, so, hotel in Sogakope, uh, I just got that information yes, this morning. Yes, but I also... But they're supposed I have to be enjoying seen, free water. I have seen evidence of people showing that they're enjoying the... I wouldn't deny that they're uh -huh. enjoying. Exactly. But, so I, if, but I'm saying to you, Eric, I'm and saying, I'm saying that Eric, I'm saying an isolated. You, look, I think that the wisdom behind free water, 50% electricity, mm -hmm. was because the hotels were not going to be, uh, for example, companies are not going to be working at 100% capacity. Mm -hmm. So that cushioning ought to be there. Yes. And the genuine concern has come. You just mentioned the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. If Mr. Uh, the owner of the hotel, for example, mm -hmm. has 20 staff. Yeah. And he's all getting the clients trickling in like mm -hmm. they would ordinarily have come mm -hmm. in. And so he needs free water to survive and cushion. Yeah, but you see, you see, for that argument, mm -hmm. right, that particular, That's the reality. that particular hotel is also enjoying a 50% cut in electricity. Okay. Now, if you have a certain uh, number of people coming to a hotel over a period, right, and because of the fact that people are not going and staying in hotels, mm -hmm. the amount of water consumption would definitely reduce. Right. I'm not saying that that particular incident or a, a reportage that mm. has come from you is not true. Okay. But that's one of the isolated incidents that I've heard. Okay. If there's a particular reason why that is happening, mm. let them do so and then sort it out. Okay. But I'm saying that government, knowing that this is something that would affect majority mm. of Ghanaians, mm. will tackle some of these things that sector would bring mm. some sort of alleviation to the country, okay. right? So everybody consumes electricity. Mm. Everybody consumes water. Either corporate entities, households, manufacturing concerns, and even government institutions, right? Now, so if you do so, what it means is that at the very first level, you're able to bring some level of comfort to the people of this country. Okay. The incidents, I mean, just so that I wrap up, the mm -hmm. issues to do with the private sector mm -hmm. schools. And as I'm saying, in my case, mm -hmm. I'm still paying just that I have to pay Less. A certain because they're doing mm -hmm. online studies. Mm -hmm. So let's find out the percentage of these private schools that are not engaging in any of that mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Now, is it the case that parents are still meant to be paying school fees? Because some of the parents are also... So there's a ripple effect. Okay. If you can find a parent maybe in a hospitality mm -hmm. industry or another industry that has been uh, immensely impacted by this and then you're saying that they have to find ways of paying fees. Mm -hmm. Because they, there's a ripple effect in all of exactly. these things. So let's find a way of a, a national you know, dialogue of a sort on, on, and yeah. saying that let's identify the the those private sector schools that are struggling. Okay. It cannot be the case that every single private sector school okay. is unable to pay its teachers. Okay. And then this conversation around finding a way around the acts or if there are some institutions that by dint of what they do would be able to extend support to these private sector schools, we do so. And the GES... Allow allow to have some bit of time. Stop. Uh, yeah. I say, yeah. <laughs> Eric is... You don't stop <laughs> so, <laughs> Mutala, the, the conversation is that private school, I have stopped. <laughs> private school teachers are in a fix at this point, not just them. I mean, so many other sectors are in a fix at this point, and salaries are not coming in. But somebody who says that they are all tax-paying people, they are either contributing to SNIT or paying yeah. something at the end of the month, now it is their lowest point. Yeah. Can government support them? Eric says there's a stimulus package. It was launched last week. But if you do the calculus, and the school is getting, say, 3,000, maximum 5,000, yeah. to what extent can you support your staff with that? Johnny, that? When you are in extreme realities, you need extreme resolutions. And I think that I just want to use this opportunity to commend my brother and comrade, comrade Okujetu Ablakwa. Mm. You remember recently I read in the in mm. at social media mm -hmm. that he had pledged to support about 200 plus mm. private teachers in his constituency. Go and check the MPP communicators mm. and their pages and their timelines. Mm -hmm. They lambasted Okujeto 
Some even questioned that from school he didn't work anywhere. Where did he get the money? A whole lot of things. Oh, oh, I, 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 but you can't use I'm just telling you. I say, oh, can I? In the first place, I saw the news in social media. Mm -hmm. So if I want to make a fair analysis of it, mm -hmm. the response to read by NPP communicators on social media is the response I will give like to who? it. Oh, please. Uh, allow, allow. We, our if time we, is up. If we check his timeline, I believe that he would have commented that. <laughs> but you know why? You know why? <laughs> if Samuel if, if Samuel if, if right. to decides. Mm -hmm to use his MP's common fund okay. to assist a section of the people in a constituency in their need, mm -hmm. I think that it is commendable. Unfortunately, in our part of the world, we tend to treat people suffering as an ac academic exercise, mm -hmm. pondering their, their pain from a distance. The government went in for loans. Mm -hmm. The government in going in for the loans didn't say that the loans are going to be expended on only people who work with the government. Mm -hmm. The loans are supposed to be expended on us. Mind you, it is not the free money President Nanado is giving us. It is the money that we pay through our taxes. Mm. Some of the monies we pay them and our children and perhaps our grandchildren will pay those, land, those loans. 1.2 billion from the IMF, 100 million dollars, 100 million dollars from the World Bank. Mm. In fact, the consolidated fund, which was established from pres by President Mahama, President Mahama, you guys be rated with every single opportunity. Dip your hands into it and took 200 million. Now, if government indeed is extending so this. Dip your hands into Oh, yes. It. They it's dip their money. Hand. How do you dip your hands <laughs> into your own money? So, so why, why do they condemn the very man who established that? I mean, uh, why? But you can't dip I, your hands into your own money. You, as, long as, they con some. as long as they condemn the very man who established okay. that with vision. Okay. Now, you dip your hands into it. Now, I'm saying that if government has indeed put in this packet, mm -hmm. and, and I heard him say, oh, the president has extended some facility. The president Nanado hasn't given anybody any favor. It's the money that he went in for the loan. No, for, I, please, I, I, let, me let, finish. let me finish. Let me if finish. We are addressing let me, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. He said uh -huh. he went in for the loan for and on behalf of the people of this country. Exactly. Now, and the people of this country That's includes... Leadership. Yes. The, why? The people of this country includes private teachers. Right. Now, if government can decide to extend some facilities to them, mind you, these are people who are not on salary. Mm. And I'll give you a, a practical example. Quickly, the school that my, my, that my daughter attends, mm. I had a call from the proprietor of the school. They have a staff. They pay them every month. The fact that they are not in school, mm. they can't allow the people to go that way without paying them. Right. If there is any way we can extend some payments, mm -hmm. some payments to the school so that they can at least cushion them. Mm. I didn't have money. I had to do that because, one, these are people that they have as, as permanent staff. Mm. The proprietor could have decided that, look, we are not teaching and therefore so won't, do that. won't pay you. These people are people who have families. They go home, they will not be able to take care of their families. The consequences, the least the government can do is to check in that money, mm -hmm. find some portion of the money. We can identify private schools in this country. Mm -hmm. Even if you give them half of how much they are supposed to take, I think that they, they are still gaining. Until you know, six, 600 have, have, uh, schools have applied for the stimulus package. Exactly. So I'm saying that there should be a way by which government should extend to them. I remember as a student leader, we had problem with regards to this GET fund mm -hmm. and the fact that the assistance to student, students who were in private schools were not entitled mm -hmm. to that. That's right. This is the one notes. of the ways that I said that we ponder the suffering and the pain of people from a distance. As long as we begin to do things the way we do things, mm -hmm. others will have a problem. You yourself, you have indicated these people have families. What are they going to do? They have kids. Now, you, we may have the privilege to send our kids to private schools. Mm. You have the privilege to still pay for your kids to be educated online. I attended a site school. I believe you also attended a site school. There are many people I in school. Yes, there are many people in this country who attended my school, Kulkul cool, cool School. Mm. Those people will not have the opportunity. They have never they have seen a computer, let alone even sitting to have the Zoom and others that will do. What will be the consequences? If there is a way that government can provide such assistance to those who attend the private schools, I think that it will be an assistance worthy of, 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 of doing. Thank so you. Let us all look at it in that, in that perspective. But one thing. Thank you. No, can you, I, can, you, no, you, no, you, you can't say one thing. It has nothing to do. You can't say one thing. Ambassador Sam Piali says the problem of the private school is a misconceived national priority it's the ownership that is private but the teachers and staff are all taxpaying citizens yeah, yeah. and are entitled to any stimulus packages as a result of COVID now he also goes on to say that the Ghana water and ECG acts did not have any provision for free water and electricity they changed their operations under the executive instruments so who says SNIT 
could not have done when that. President That's what Mama is asking. Said that. And they, happy they birthday to Ruthiana Insaku. Uh, this is from your husband, yeah. Chief Nat Insaku. And also, J. John Kweku Segbefia. It's your birthday of uh, Bravehearts, my good brother. Happy birthday to you and to the Honorable Ellen and Ntoso, MP4, Krachi West constituency from Joseph Nyako here at TV3. Joshua Nyako, I beg your pardon, at TV3. Most grateful for your time, Eric. John, you've not been telling um, about this a, response. A, is a member of the MPB's communication COVID team and also team. Uh, he it's has his eyes on the Fantiakwa South Seed and also Comrade Mutala Mohammed is a former trade minister and also he's looking at the Tamale Central Seed. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time.